Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of On the Clock with Personal Living. I'm David. I'm with Personal Living. And today we have a, the opportunity to talk to a friend of mine, Stephanie Zeverino. And Stephanie is the Director of Business Development for Belmont Village Senior Living. And we're going to get into that in a minute because we've we got some really exciting stuff to talk about when it comes to Belmont. But first, I just want to, hey, Stephanie, welcome to On the Clock. How are you? Hey, David, good morning. Doing well, thank you. You know, under the circumstances, here we are. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, Stephanie, I'd like to start these off with finding a little bit about who you are, what you do, and things like that. So, what's your background? Yeah, oh, well, my background um, is hospitality. I spent the, my God, the past 25 years in hotel sales and marketing specifically 17 years with the Walt Disney Organization in Orlando prior to uh, moving to California. So two years ago, Belmont Village was developing, um, I had been with the company in LA for nine years and they were developing a new site here in Fort Lauderdale. So my family's all in, in Florida and I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to come back and uh, to be closer, at least be in the same state as my family. So I've been here two years now. Oh, you're back for two years, huh? <laughs> I've been back for two years. I was gone for 25 and back for two. <laughs> so how did you get into the senior market? I mean, you know, I've talked to a lot of people and, you know, some people went to school for it. Some people came about it another way. How did you get involved? Yeah, I, I just felt it fell in my lap, to be honest with you. Actually, I take that back. I was really strategic back in 2008 when the economy, we had the downturn in the economy. Do you remember fall of 2008? It was just horrendous. And I had gotten laid off a couple of times that year in my hospitality positions. And I decided to make a concerted effort to transition to an industry that was going to sustain me as I as I aged in the workplace, um, I wanted to look at a career that was going to sustain me as a female, also aging in the workplace and not, you know, um, just looking for an industry that was going to allow me to just keep working through the end of my career. So I made a concerted effort to move from hospitality to healthcare, but I didn't know where in healthcare I would fit, if it would be pharmaceutical sales, medical sales. Um, and I sent my resume out and the first hit I got was senior housing, senior living, because it transitioned really nicely from um, hotel sales and marketing to senior housing, housing sales and marketing. So it was an easy fit for me. So I got hired in 2009 with a company in, in LA. It was a new build and it was Silverado Senior Living. It was all Alzheimer's and dementia care. So my first time in the business was really learning about Alzheimer's and dementia. You know, I was gonna, you jumped on it. I said, I was gonna say that it seems like a natural fit, hospitality, selling that to selling uh, senior living communities. I mean, it's the lifestyle, it's everything that goes along with it. It's not just a room. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, it's the whole experience, you know, senior housing, community living, is the experience that you get when you move into an environment like a Belmont Village. And um, it's the same thing, like selling Walt Disney World. And I was selling the experience of coming right. to Disney for your conferences and your meetings and, um, and the experience that goes along with that. So it was very similar. And we, we like to pull uh, from the hospitality industry into sales and marketing positions in senior living because it really it lends itself well. The skill sets are exactly the same. Exactly, exactly. So let's just jump right into it. You've got some exciting, exciting stuff going on. Belmont Village in Fort Lauderdale. I mean, two years in the making, uh, set back <laughs> by COVID and probably a handful well, of other things. But you're open now, aren't you? We are. We finally opened August 3rd. You know, uh, David, we were supposed to open a year ago, because of construction delays, we, um, we didn't open. And when we were finally ready to move into this building from the info center, from the sales center, it was March 6th. And that, and we had our grand opening ribbon cutting, 
with city officials, the mayor on, um, I think it was March 13th, and that week is when everything was starting to shut down. So we basically sat in this building for months, just waiting for ACA to license us so we can start moving our depositors in. We had a lot of people waiting to move in that deposited and uh, everything shut down. So we finally got licensed in July and opened August 3rd to our people that have been waiting to move in that deposited. And uh, knowing the restrictions, they still wanted to come. They still wanted to get out of where they were and into Belmont Village. So, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting process. So that's interesting to me. Again, I'm not in the, in the senior living or in the medical alerts. I mean, all I read about and heard about is how assisted livings were kind of like closed, especially for people going in and out because they were afraid of COVID. You were different because you were in an empty facility. So you had nobody with COVID there, but you didn't right. have any restrictions on bringing people in your first handful of, of residents. Yeah, we um, absolutely, we, we had to follow the CDC guidelines and all of the protocols that were set in place when we opened August 3rd. So it was, uh, residents had to be tested prior to moving in. They had to have a negative test and then they had seven day window to move into their apartment here at Belmont Village. And they had to quarantine for another seven days. Um, and then we retested them. So that was that 14 day window you were hearing about. So once we retested them and they tested ne negative again, then they were allowed to, they were free to utilize the amenities in the building. So that's how we did it. Since then now, the restrictions have lifted. So a lot, again, I, I, and I'm assuming, and this could be wrong on my part, that there's a major difference between an established ALF and a brand new ALF, because I know, I spoke to a lot of people in the established ALS, even in July and August. Well, maybe not so much in August when the restrictions were starting to ease up a little bit. Uh, people were still in their rooms and there was very little uh, of that socialization. You doesn't sound like you had that at Belmont. No, they, they only during quarantine time. So, and this is continues, continues. So anyone moving in, has to quarantine once they test negative a second time then they're they're able to they're free to utilize the building so um yeah it was very different because we weren't open so our approach and what we were able to do was very very different because we had not been open so it's not like we had 150 people in this building and everyone had to stay in their rooms until we got past this so it was a much better situation so in hindsight the fact that we didn't open a year ago it's probably a good thing because we were able to open with, um, you know, with a lot, not less restrictions, but certainly able to open um, to a building where there's a lot of room to social distance and, um, and utilize the beautiful amenities that we have here. That's exactly what I was thinking. They got to take advantage of Belmont Village. And like I said, I've got, you know, I'm going to look over here to my, I think it's my right on the computer's probably left. But it, it's a beautiful building. I've got it up here. It looks like it's about six, seven stories tall, right in the, right in the heart of uh, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, we're 12 stories. Um, 12 stories, wow. And what we did is we took advantage of the beautiful view. So when you go uh, take the elevator up to the 12th floor, we've got a magnificent floor to ceiling window dining room that overlooks the Coral Ridge Yacht Club, all of the million dollar yachts, the intercoastal, Sunrise Bay and the ocean. So it's a, it's a spectacular view when you go up to uh, the 12th floor. I actually wanted to do this video up there, but there's a little bit of traffic. So I, I wanted to stay in a more uh, confined area just in case not to get disturbed, but it's spectacular. So we're 12 stories wow. and we're above ground. So the apartments start on the fifth floor. So we don't have to worry about flooding as well because we, um, the parking structures are on one to four and then the fifth floor to the 12th floor is where the building the actual building and amenities start so yeah, that's that's really cool i mean i don't live that close to the water but i am on the second floor i always tell people if we flood there's bigger problems than that you know <laughs> the same uh, uh, absolutely well we designed it according to the location in which we sure. sit 
you know, we're, we're right here. We've got, um, you know, we're right in the evacuation route. So we've got our protocols and procedures in place. We've got the generator to sustain us. We've got, uh, you know, we didn't, we got licensed on the first day. It was amazing. It's, it's relatively from what I hear in Florida, unheard of to have the in licensure, the license folks, ACA come and inspect you first time out and pass you immediately. Wow. And because normally, yeah, they see something and they have to, they have to come back in. You have to fix a couple of things, but we got, we passed on the first day because we've, we, you know, this is our 31st community in the country. So we're not, you know, this is not our first rodeo, but it is our first in Florida. So, so what are you building one in Coral Gables in? Yes, we've got, um, we're going to be opening four more um, is we're slated to look at four more additional ground up locations because we're, um, you know, we're owners, operators and developers of our own communities. So we don't take over an existing community, nor do we have management come in and manage us. We are Belmont Village uh, owners, operators and developers. So we're looking at four more areas within Southeast Florida to develop. Coral Gables is definitely a done deal. So we're gonna be breaking ground very soon. Oh, that's exciting. Very exciting. And then we're looking at a couple of other areas, Boca, Palm Beach, Aventura. So it's wherever we feel, wherever we can find the property and the land, um, and also in markets that can sustain us because we are on the higher end, we're high end luxury, so our price points um, are, are a little bit more upscale or a little bit more higher. So we have to be in markets that can support those prices. All right. So you, Belmont Village, are, do you have independent assisted and memory care all under one roof? We do. Yeah. So we're, um, we're, uh, our financial model is month to month. So it's just, um, so it's not a buy-in. So people come in, pick their apartment. We determine whether or not they want in, they need independent living. So they can't have any care requirements um, in independent living. Um, some might have some light showering, um, assistance with showering and some light um, ADL support. But then we have assisted living and those are for people who have physical limitations. Then we have Circle of Friends for Mild Cognitive Impairment. So that's a program, a whole brain fitness program, dedicated, structured, research-based program where we help residents that have mild cognitive impairment. So they may need some physical support as well as cognitive support, but they're not yet ready to move into a secured memory unit. So then we have the, our, then we do also have our secured memory unit, which we call the neighborhood. So we've got four levels. Oh, four levels, because I was reading about the brain wellness program, and I wasn't sure, I just made the leap that that was part of the memory care, but that's before the memory care. Correct. That's the inter interim level. Um, so it's for those mild to moderate that have newly been diagnosed with, uh, with mild cognitive impairment, and they go into a research-based structured program that tackles the six domains of the brain. So we really want to engage them. We want to we want to give them activities where they're learning something new and they're getting that mental stretch. So they're not, they're not just sedentary and they're not doing the same things over and over again. So we're really specific and deliberate in how we deliver our Circle of Friends program for mild cognitive impairment. And we, we partnered with um, Vanderbilt University, Dr. Sandra Simmons, and she, um, she's the one who looks at our outcomes determines whether or not we're being successful and makes adjustments to our program. And then we re-deliver the program based on her recommendations as well. We've had this program in place for almost 12 years now in all of our Belmont homes. Wow. Not everybody's ready for a secured environment. If you're just showing early signs, you're either left in, in assisted living to flounder around and try to navigate your day and we find that those residents are really isolating because they're afraid of being caught, if you will, and they're afraid that their friends are going to notice that they are having struggle. So we move them into this program, and it's it's social. It's a social program. They're with other residents going through the same thing. So we identified that there was a need in that market because not everyone needs to be in a secure environment. And then and then eventually those um, coming from home. Are already that moderate to, to uh, severe dementia, we do have the secured area as well for those things. 
So let me ask you this. If it's a couple and they start out in assisted living and then one needs to go to the third step, that intermediate step that we were just talking about, do they both move or just one move? How does that work? No, thanks. Th thanks for bringing that up because that's what we do really, really well. So the beauty about Belmont Village and, and the levels of care that we offer it, it allows it allows anyone, whether you're individual or whether or not you're a couple, to age in place and to remain together for as long as possible. So if a couple moves into assisted living, and let's say she starts to develop some mild cognitive impairment, then what they can do is they can remain in the same room they've been in, and she can daycare in our Circle of Friends program. So mm -hmm. we can get her, and we'll bring her into the program. The program is on the sixth floor. So we'll go and get her and bring her to the sixth floor, bring him to the sixth floor. And the same thing too, if a resident is in assisted living and it's a single occupant and she and he starts start noticing some decline, um, they can stay in their, their apartment they've been in for a number of years and again, we'll daycare them in the circle friends program. Oh, very cool. So that is one, in my opinion, truly exciting thing that you guys offer. What else do you offer your, your residents on a regular basis? I'm assuming you got movie nights and things like that. So what do you yeah. offer? Yeah, we're, um, we're really rich in programming. Um, Belmont Village is very specific in how we deliver our resident programming. And everything is specific to mind, body, and awareness. So we have a program called the MBA Club. So residents that can actually look at the calendar of events and look and see what programs are going to help them with either their mind, their body, so physical exercise, and, and meditation for mental uh, acuity as well. So we've got, um, we've got that, but we do everything. We've got um, senior thrives. We've got lifelong learning. We just partnered with NOVA, and we're delivering virtual lifelong learning programs starting in October. We've got lectures from uh, Broward Health. We're offering... Um, we're offering physician lectures on all kinds of topics. And then we've got bingo and card games and uh, all types of enrichment programs, exercise class, Tai Chi. When we go back to normal, we're gonna have entertainment and happy hour and, and parties outside. We've got a beautiful pool. A beautiful oh, pool. I saw that pool. That was spectacular. Yes, I mean, we have on-site physical therapy, also occupational therapy, speech therapy licensed nurses on site 24 hours a day, and our own caregivers, we call PALS, personal assistant liaisons, and those are the, our PALS that deliver the ADL support to our residents in assisted living. So we direct hire our own caregivers and our licensed nurses to deliver medications. Now, again, that's really cool, and your independent living people, I mean, you are now in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. I mean, you're across the street from a beautiful mall. You're yep. probably, I don't, not necessarily walking distance, but driving distance from the Broward Center for the Performing Arts. You've got tons of restaurants. I know your independent living people can take advantage of all that stuff, and it's a lot, but do you do like things to get the assistant living people out to those kinds of things, or, or is it, are they more self-contained within the building? No, not at all, not at all. Just because they need some, some light physical help, some need more physical help, but the assisted living residents are able to go out and, and take advantage of those things that are around uh, this area as well. Some of them might need some assistance. We have transportation to help them. Uh, we work with outside vendors to, um, to escort them if they want. Our kids, our pals, really have to stay within the building. So if someone wants to go out, they have to be able to go out on their own and be able to walk uh, we can drop them off at the mall, but they have to be able to use their walker, walk around the mall on their own. We'll swing back and pick them up, but yeah, absolutely. And then we do some drives. We do specific outings for our assisted living and independent living residents. So they'll all couple together. They'll go to the, the Parker Playhouse and the- and, uh, exactly. Absolutely. And then our circle of friends residents and our neighborhood residents will um, also, we then will take them out on um, programming and scenic drive. So we are required to take them out as well in groups to uh, outings. So we take our circle group out and our neighborhood groups out as well. And those groups are escorted. Well, that's fantastic. 
So what separates you from the other assisted living? I mean, I understand that there's categories, right? I mean, you know, like everything else in the world, you know, there's, you know, there's categories. But when you compare yourself to the others in your category, what separates you? Why Belmont Village? Yeah, well, I think, I think the most important thing is what I said at the top of uh, our talk was that we are independently owned and operators. So we don't, we're not, there's not a management company that's going to come in and take over and change things up and switch things around and, um, and, and, and then you get, you get staffing issues, and staffing problems. So we're solid. We, um, the way that we staff as well is very, very different. We staff in-house. Um, so we don't have outside vendors coming in and providing care for our residents. So we control the care of our residents. And we know exactly what's going on with our residents all the time because we don't have a new member doing that. So the fact that we're owners and operators and you're not going to have families that want to move in their loved one to Belmont Village knows that there's a sense of security that we're not going to be, their, their loved one is not going to have now a new management company that they have to deal with. Um, that's really important. And then we really staff um, very deeply. So we don't utilize our, our workers, like our housekeepers are not going to all of a sudden now be asked to be a pal, a caregiver. We're not going to ask them to start waiting tables. Everyone has their own specific job and their own specific responsibilities. And our training is phenomenal. Our onboarding and all of the videos and the culture of Belmont Village and who we are as a provider is instilled in our, uh, in our employees. And it's evident when you come into the Belmont Village, you see the energy and the life and, and our employees smiling and are happy to be here and are welcoming. So all of those are really a big factor. And then of course, um, financially, you've got the ability to age in place and also move around if you can no longer now afford um, the level of care that you need. You can offset the cost of care for a smaller apartments. So we have studio apartments. So the ability to be flexible and keep someone within a budget that they can, they can work with, we're able to do that for them. Sounds fantastic. And, uh... Now that you're kind of open, I'll be able to come in and uh, say hello there instead of uh, yes. on Zoom. Yep. <laughs> so how have you been passing the time? What's Stephanie been doing for the last six, seven months like everybody else cooped up? How's your, what's going on with you? Oh my God. Well, the first thing I decided to do, and um, it was really crazy because I went to our local bike shop next door to our building and I went in to go buy a bike because I thought, you know, what better way it is to get out and enjoy Florida and enjoy the, the fresh air um, and, and be independent of everybody else and be on a bicycle and just, you know, look around and get to know my neighborhood. And Birch Taylor Park is right here. So I bought a bike. And, uh, and plus I have a, a, a personal trainer. So um, between that, I've been doing a lot of exercising. A lot of people, have, from what I hear, has gained weight during this pandemic. Uh, for, actually, I've lost weight because I'm, oh. I'm, I'm exercising more. I'm going, I'm using my bicycle. I haven't ridden a bike since I was a kid. So I bought a bike, that's what I've been doing. And then, um, you know, I have not seen my family. My mom is in an assisted living community in Orlando and I'm going this weekend for the first time to go see her. After six months, I've not seen my mom. So I'm driving up to Orlando, but I, I, my family's all here. My brother is in West Palm, my mom, my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my cousins, my nieces, my nephews, everybody's in central Florida. So. I'm on the phone with them all the time, but uh, I can't wait to see my mom this weekend. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. You know, so Stephanie, I appreciate you being on. If somebody wants information on Belmont Village, how can they reach you? They can reach me directly at szeverino at belmontvillage.com, or they can call me personally at 786-459-5128. And then the main number for Belmont Village is 954 524-8500, and that will get them the front desk, and the desk can transfer them to any one of us here at Belmont Village. Perfect. Excellent. I just want to say thanks for being on. I found it to be interesting. It's very exciting to talk to you because of the new Belmont Village, and uh, all the best. Thank you, David. I appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.